partners uh, via Zoom. Uh, of course, we have here with us uh, Mr. Carlos Barrera. He is the CEO of Lazada Philippines. Later, I'll properly introduce him. Uh, and also, I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Daryl Teo of Lazada uh, from Singapore and others. Uh, we have today a very important topic about e-commerce. Uh, what is the future of e-commerce in the Philippines? Maybe even Southeast Asia because Lazada is all over Southeast Asia. Uh, what are the trends uh, about e-commerce? The impact on the Philippine economic recovery? Also very important, the coexistence between online shopping and the traditional physical shopping. Um, we'd like to uh, invite for uh, welcome remarks our various speakers, but before that, I'll mention some of them. Uh, aside from our distinguished guest, uh, CEO, Mr. Carlos Barrera, we have uh, the Department of Trade and Industry, DTI, Assistant Secretary, Jean Pacheco, later on, will talk. Uh, she's in charge of e-commerce in the DTI of the Philippine government. Also, we have later with us uh, Chairman of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, Honorary Chairman Sergio Ortiz Luis Jr., um, and also one of the top retailers online of Lazada, Miss Kim Lato of Kim Store, will talk about her success, her experience uh, with e-commerce and Lazada. And later on, uh, Mr. Carlos Barrera will speak and will answer the questions of our media friends here, physically and those via Zoom and via Facebook online. Uh, let us uh, start by in, uh, inviting Department of Trade and Industry Assistant Secretary Jean Pacheco to speak. Uh, welcome, Mr. Carlos Pereira. We'll have uh, ASEC Jean Pacheco speak. While waiting. Good morning to everyone Ayon. and I'd like on behalf of the Department of Trade and Industry, maraming maraming salamat po for inviting us uh, to the to the Pandesal Forum. Um, uh, alam niyo ho, talagang uh, sa totoo lang, I would have wanted really to go kasi uh, gusto ko kong makita yung makatikim ng Pandesal with butter and uh, and uh, kapeho, no? So, uh, so I, I greetings to all of you out there. Um, also with Lazada, our friends from Lazada, and to all of the participants. Um, actually, oh, I am, uh, I am at this time. I would be in Congress for the, for the e-governance um, technical working group. So, I uh, sayang po, and I hope Sir Wilson, I will have the opportunity to go and uh, participate in in your in one of your pandesal for. Uh, sometime in the near future. Um, at uh, nasa, nabanggit na po na ako po si Jean Pacheco na, na in charge po sa ating e-commerce dito sa DTI. And I would like to share with you, ito pong aming key message, ito pong tagline namin because um, uh, we crafted uh, the roadmap on e-commerce and, um, and we came out with a tagline um, that would guide us in the roadmap. Basta e-commerce, madali. No, kasi nga po, um, especially ho, nung nagkaroon ng pandemic and na-accelerate na po yung adoption talaga ng, ng e-commerce. And when we say madali, alam po natin that e-commerce is easy and convenient. But para ho sa, to all of the, uh, to, all, to the public out there, to our citizens, when we say madali, it also means the strategies that the DTI and the government is is implementing to promote e-commerce. So, yun pong madali is also stands for ma, market access, da, or digitalization, and then li, for logistics integration. 
These are the, ano po, these are, ito po yung mga palatandaan namin for all of the programs that we have initiated and continue to initiate no, uh, uh, in order to increase uh, the number of uh, sellers. No? We want more merchants selling online and we also want to have more buyers buying online more frequently. Alam nyo po, we are guided, um, one of the studies that we are guided with is the Google Temasek study. And bagay na bagay po ito sa, sa brief ng inyong uh, na pinadala sa amin regarding the, the, the forum. Kasi po, ang, ang ating uh, Google study noon ay na, na we always make reference to. In 2021, talagang sinabi po talaga that there were a lot of digital consumers um, because of the pandemic. And in that study, in the 2021, study, uh, it was said na 63% are from the non-metro area. So, hindi lang po ito from from the from the uh, urban areas na. And meron po mga non-metro areas. And and of the interviewed, 99% said they continue, they will continue to use digital services. Ngayon po, uh, naglabas po ang, uh, ang, uh, ang Google ng pangal ng later study nila uh, and this is what you have rightfully observed ano po um, kasi nga po uh, you are correct that you know um, there is a little bit of normalizing no sabi nga po ng Google no? normalizing na no? digital adoption um, is normalizing in fact ang sabi nga po ng Google na in terms of e-commerce ito yung internet retail na sinasabi natin it is already nearing full adoption Ngayon po, yung tama po na medyo kumukonti na po ang, ang mga gumagamit ng, ng, uh, ng, ng online. Eh kasi nga po, bumabalik po tayo sa mga dati nating gawi. Kasi alam nyo naman, ako din po naniniwala tayo. Tayo mga Pilipino, mahilig po tayo sa mga pisil-pisil. Diba? Pag mumibili tayo, gusto din natin papisil-pisil. So, hindi naman po din lahat ay, ay, ay puro online. But I would like to, to tell you that I am a digital immigrant. At nung nagkaroon na po ng online grocery, nako, hindi na po ako magpupunta sa grocery. Kasi ayoko pong pumila. Ayoko pong pumila. Kaya talagang isa ho ako sa talagang nagsasabi talaga na pagpapatuloy ko po dito ang aking mga online buying. According to the recent study of Google, eh, urban consumers talaga po drive the economy. And and ito yung something that we'd like to share with you because uh, we are also mindful of all of these insights and observations. Ang, ang sabi po dun sa Google study ay ngayon that digital adoption is maturing. We, we should understand if you want e-commerce to grow, we really should understand usage behavior no? according to the various consumer segments. Ang, ang sinasabi po talaga dito in the study uh, that I keep on citing, ang talagang gumagamit po ng, ng, ng online, yung mga bata, mga digital natives. E marami po sa Pilipino ay talagang digital natives. No? So, ang median age mo yata natin ay 25, uh, 25 years old. And, uh, and uh, talagang, I think, mga 40% yata tayo ay digital natives. So, talagang marami pong Pilipino ay talagang Young. And ito pong Pilipino ang siyang talagang, uh, uh, ang, ito pong mga young are the ones that really drive e-commerce. According to the study of Google, ang isa pa pong um, nag-drive nag, nag ng e-commerce, yung mga affluent, no? yung mga affluent users. So, uh, affluent users at saka those in the urban and suburban areas. So, what we're trying to do now in DTI and I suppose even the private sector, uh, Lazada and all of the platforms, is they're really looking at these um, studies and dyan po mag-focus mag po yung, yung, mga, yung mga efforts in order to, to uh, propose further promote e-commerce. Um, alam nyo ho, uh, next slide please. Um, ito po yung study na we'd like to point out. Well, well, we see that the digital adoption is, sabi nga po, normalizing. Very clear din po in the Google study that sustained growth is expected across the board, everything, in with the Philippines po as the front runners, no? Philippines po at saka Vietnam. Alam nyo po, I believe that the study said uh, the growth will be about 20% um, 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 uh, from 2023 up to 2030, no? So there will be two-digit two, two growth, no, of, of e-commerce. And, and as you can see, 
Um, in 2021, uh, natatandaan ko ho kasi 17 billion, pero in-adjust ng Google, eh, ginawa nilang 16 billion. But in the last report, I remember 17 billion. But uh, Google adjusted na in 2021, gross merchandise value of the Philippine digital economy um, I reached ano po, no, 16 billion. And, they, and in 2022, 20 billion uh, ang... ang, 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 ang ang uh, estimates po talaga ng, ng Google. So talaga hung, um, uh, according to Google, um, it would appear that uh, by 2025, we will reach 35 billion. Next slide, please. So we, 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 we of course, are, because sabi nga po natin na uh, we are conscious and mindful about, about e-commerce, what we want to do. Uh, we want more sellers mga SMEs po to sell online no uh, marami po talaga tayong um, um, naging na, nakatulong po ang ang pagpivot sa online ng mga small businesses especially nung pandemic and we would also like to study consumer behavior uh, and uh, because we are saying that we want consumers to buy more frequently as well para ho ma, para ho to 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 make a more dynamic uh, e-commerce so we we want to show you this ano this um study that we came across with from Statista. Why why Filipinos uh why 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 Filipinos will continue to to do shopping online? Kasi po ano sabi 54 54% of those that were interviewed said kasi nga it's more convenient. Parang ako ho yan, no? Kasi ako ho medyo Tamad po ako mag-shopping sa physical store. Uh, at tapos, oh, yung 49% naman, nawili. Nawili po sila no? dahil they have a positive experience no? sa online shopping. At uh, yun po, no? meron din nagsasabi 26% na marami daw nakakakuha mga promo-promo. So, this is, these are some of the reasons that that, uh, that the studies have have uh, released that talagang marami pa rin po talaga ang mag online shopping. So, uh, this is one of the reasons why we in DTI are promoting, uh, next slide please, we are promoting um, um, how to sell online no? and then uh, how how people should also be be mindful of uh, of uh, buying online. Alam nyo po, ngayong, ngayong nagkaroon po tayo ng change in administration. Number one po talaga yung sinabi ng aming secretary na, na priority po is to upgrade, upskill, and upsize micro, small, medium enterprises. We are encouraging our, our, ano, our SMEs to also use ano po, di ba, uh, online because e-commerce is really uh, is one of the channels. In fact, uh, sabi ko nga po no nung during the time of the, the pandemic tinu uh, kami po ay nagkaroon ng ng um ng programs no with Lazada of course helping us also which is control biz no because lahat po naka lockdown at the time so we really encourage our micro small medium enterprises to pivot from offline to online ano uh, pero ngayon po na meron na tayong physical wala tayong lockdown pwede na po tayong talagang mag ano mag physical store no kasi ang sinasabi naman ho natin hindi ho natin sinasabi na mag offline mag online ka lang hindi po no we really want multi channel kung saan po talaga ang mga merkado natin markets doon po din talaga tayo but ang importante ho na hindi kami titigil sa DTI is to encourage digital upskilling no uh, we want to upgrade kasi um ano po talaga it's really about the digital economy no as we move forward um for the past naka ano ho kami na nakatulong po kami ng mga na, nag-attend po mga over 40,000 na participants dito sa aming mga webinars next slide please um dahil dahil ho, um bakit ho namin why why do we want to to um to pursue the digitalization no kasi as we can see no talaga pong we are moving towards that era in the digital economy and as we said um based on the slides that I have earlier started it talagang we see the growth of e-commerce no um in the Philippines and and talagang napakadami po talaga tayong narinig na mga mga positive stories no na na nag 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 nagkaroon ng income ang mga mga micro small medium enterprises pero alam nyo ho um dahil we also uh, studied um ito pong digitalization of micro small medium enterprises um we we did a, a study and in the study eh ano po ito parang uh, meron po kaming study na 
pinattern with ASEAN. Yun po yung basic, intermediate, and advanced. Yun pong basic na mga SME dun sa ASEAN study, ito po yung mga merong email na they use it for business. Yung level 2 naman po, ito naman po yung intermediate, meaning to say nagbebenta po sila online. And then ito pong level 3, which is the advanced, um, they, the, these are SMEs that, that use data analytics. Alam nyo ho, when we did the same study, similar study, um, meron po tayong level na mas mababa pa sa basic. At kaya ho nilagyan namin, ginawa ho namin level 0. Meaning to say, ay wala ho sila, hindi ho nila ginagamit yung mga digital tools. No? Uh, yung iba naman po, merong smartphone. Uh, pero hindi ho nila ginagamit sa business. Yung iba po, walang email. Eh, syempre po, when we now in the business now, lahat po tayo ngayon, no, tayo ay gumagamit na ng mga email, no, at para dumami po yung ating mga, mga, mga ating mga supply, kahit na suppliers or buyers, eh, yan na po, na mga digital tools na po ang ginagamit natin. Pwede na po tayong gumamit ng mga telephone, di ba ho? Yan po, pwede na tayong mag, mag, mag transfer ng pera by a, by a mobile phone. So, yan ho yung isa natin na uh, what we are looking at in the DTI na kailangan po talaga nating um, um, i-upscale ang ating mga micro, small, medium enterprises. One of the other things that is um, really central to um, to um, to e-commerce would be digital payments. We are encouraging our micro, small, medium enterprises to adopt digital payments in as much as we are also encouraging the Filipino consumer to also pay no, using mga digital wallets or, or maybe, you know, yung mga InstaPay fan transfer. Nung nag-interview po kami ng SMEs in that same study, nakita ho natin 54% sabi, Ay, hindi ko na kailangan yan kasi ayoko nang magbago, ayoko nang matuto. So I'm used to old habits. Ang sabi ng 43% din po, kasi marami pong ano, no, mga chinecheck po nila kung ano yung talagang, bakit hindi kayo gumagamit ng mga mobile wallet? Ay, hindi ko kailangan yan. Diba? But yan po yung sinasabi natin na in the era now of uh, the digital economy and napakabilis po digital payments, very safe, very safe and very convenient. So ako po, hindi na ako naghahawak ng cash. Kasi po, yung cash, eh, ano po yun, eh, baka lalo na ngayon, may COVID, COVID pa tayo, and uh, yun na po, yung mga maraming pang, ano, marami pa tayong, yung, yung mga, ngayon nasasabi nga ako, yung latest news, may mga fake pa nga, ng mga, ng mga cash. So, isipin po natin na, if it were all digital payments, it would be fast, and it is very convenient. You don't need to carry cash. You don't need to think of sukli. No, hindi niyo na ho kailangan ng problema ng sukli kasi pwedeng yung mismong amount na po ang inyong uh, ibibigay no o i i ibibili. So, ayun ho, no, the, as I said, no, the DTI will continue um, um upscaling relative to digital payments. We would like to um assist the, the 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 Banko Central no in the financial inclusion and the digitizing of merchant payments. But but more than that, we also are encouraging um our our our, our SMEs no to use the digital tools for their businesses. Next slide. Yeah. So for of, for all of you na nandiyan po sa ating Pandesal Forum right now, meron po kami, you can see here um, a QR code and we would like to invite our ano po, our um, SMEs to take a look, to try this test, no? This is a free test. It's uh, three minutes and it's like a diagnostic uh, test na Tinawag po namin tong DM2 kasi it's about digital maturity and digital mindset. Um, so yun po, no, we would like uh, you to try the test kasi po, it will measure your technology, your your product, your process, no, and your people. So ito po din, if you can uh, get the QR code, nandiyan po yung SME Toolkit DTI.gov.ph. So why are we doing that? no? Um, we, we are really going through the the digital mindset uh, uh, toolkit because pag nag naggawa po kayo, nagkuha po kayo ng test, kung ano po yung profile ninyo, 
ma mapupunta po kayo dito sa mga learning resources no na kailangan so halimbawa baka kailangan niyo ng social media marketing o kaya kailangan niyo dito may mga courses po ito ng mga Facebook kung paano ho mag, mag magkaroon ng tumaas yung sales natin sa Facebook so nakalink po yung mga learning resources natin dito po sa ating uh, DM toolkit so i hope you'll try that and you'll give us feedback kasi tinetest po natin yung yung DM toolkit so now I, I I'm sorry I'm I nako nag over na po yata ako but I I would like to take this opportunity Sir Wilson that um to to share our e-commerce initiatives pinapatuloy po natin no yung ating control base reboot now in fact ito nga ho yung sinasabi natin na ngayon ho di ba multi channel sinasabi natin may brick and mortar kayo tuloy po natin yan no kung gusto po ninyo sa Facebook Lazada pwede po tayo nandiyan po talaga lahat ng kung meron nga po kayong sariling website Pwede po lahat yan. And ngayon po ang sinasabi natin, eh, dapat po yung omni-channel for SME. So those are some of the new training programs that we are setting up. I think this will be next week. Uh, so I hope that you will keep uh, posted kasi talagang ito po yung nakikita namin na mga bagong topics na lalong na-appreciate po ito, lalo na pala sa ating mga micro, small, medium enterprises. I would also like to even now, um, uh, inform everyone out there um, um, that we will soon, uh, actually next year po, no, we would excited po kami sa project na ito, yung Cashless Bazaar. Kasi gusto po talaga natin ma-encourage na ang ating mga merchants ay um, to, to, to practice digital, accept digital payments. And we also would like to encourage our consumers to also use uh, digital payments. Um, the same thing po, meron din po kaming ibayad campaign. Kasi yan po, no, tinutulungan ho namin si si ano si Banko Central para ho talaga to digitize merchant payments and also to to um to to increase um financial inclusion next we work with partners. Lahat po ng activities namin uh, ay talaga pong hindi namin magagawa ng DTI alone and the government because this is where we are very uh, um, appreciative and we are uh, really uh, focused on a very strong public-private sector partnership. Um, and, and nakita ho ninyo here all of the private sector engaged in the ito pong e-commerce ecosystem. No? Um, especially, I'd like to do a special mention on, on Lazada. Alam nyo po, the importance of Lazada as a platform, they are very um, helpful to government, especially the DTI, on many aspects. Um, when we when we need resources, because po uh, many people seem to be afraid. Mahirap magbenta on mag on board ng mga platforms. So sila sada po they would always um, uh, accept our invitation so that people will realize that. Ano ano? Ito po. Uh, ganito para ho um, maganda ang experience ng 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 inyong selling sa Lazada. Ito po dapat ang gagawin natin mga tes. Paano po magumpisa? Uh, and and marami pong uh, marami po talagang uh, uh, shine share yung mga experts po ng Lazada. So Lazada, I would like to thank this opportunity to thank you. No, um, plus the other the other portion is on the consumer protection. Pag meron hong mga nako complain. Uh, we we give it to Lasada and and Lasada makes it a point to really address this this uh, consumer campaigns. I think I'm on my last slide and I'm so sorry, sir. We'll say if I took so much time, I'm excited to share um, everything that we're doing and um, I'd like to pursue um, again some more interventions with 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 you and and more chance to to use um, the Pandesal Forum as a platform. But we are um, we, the journey of the roadmap is of the first roadmap is about to be finished. We are now proceeding to our new journey. This is the 2023 to 2025. The, the ng change. Uh, we, we are in a transition now as we go to a to a new to a new roadmap, a three year roadmap. Bakit daw tatlong taon lang kasi ganyan ho ka agile ang 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 e-commerce na no? so so we're saying that uh, mabilis din dapat ang action. We are now in the engagement um, um, uh, phase. Uh, we have we have been conducting many brown bag meetings. One of the key uh, um, uh, one of the key, um, uh, ano tawag nito po, uh, what I can say is bago, no? One of the, the the new innovation, I suppose, that we would like to make sure that the e-commerce roadmap 2023 and 2025 will reflect 
is naging we are we have become more inclusive. Um, we realized in the two years that there they we need to have more lenses, no, uh, for e-commerce. So, um, in other words, um, we we really are, are talking to 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 the segments that in fact Google in the study earlier on that they said because we really want to study the e-commerce uh, demographic. No, so we have special sessions on the youth. On women, on uh, on uh, the senior citizens, we have sessions relative to regions, no? Because ngaho, may urban, may suburban, no? So we are doing all of that, plus adding more, 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 more people or more sectors. We are working with sectors on, on with the telcos, no? Because we want to make sure that there is internet, um, in terms of internet speed, the cost, the reliability. Um, we are also looking at cybersecurity. Um, we are looking at the gig economy. Um, and of course, uh, one of the things that we're working on now is because we want to improve the B2B of e-commerce. Kasi sa layo tayo sa B2C, pero malaki po ang B2B at yung cross-border uh, e-commerce. So we, we, we hope that uh, we are extending our invitation to all of you here, participants. Um, and and, and to, to Lazada, we, we would like to, again, um, encourage your full support and participation to, to the process as we, as we, we devise strategies uh, to make e-commerce uh, grow in this country. Uh, Sir Wilson, I, I hope I get a chance to meet you personally. I would be happy. Again, I hope I get an invitation to you soon. I think this is my last slide, so I would like to end. This is my last slide, na, no? Um, so I thank you. Thank you very much to the Pandesal Forum. Um, um, at isa na lang ang sasabihin ko, basta e-commerce, madali. Maraming maraming pong salamat. Thank you very much to DTI Assistant Secretary Jean Pacheco for very comprehensive uh, overview of Philippine e-commerce. She is very confident and very happy about the future. Uh, next, we'd like to invite to speak one of the most successful retailers online, uh, recommended by, uh, I, I was asking Mr. Uh, Carlos Barrera, uh, can you name se uh, several uh, successful retailers? He said there are many, and one of the most successful is Miss Kim Lato of Kim Store. So, I uh, would like to hear her uh, story about um, e-commerce, Lazada experience. Uh, next, we'd like to invite Ms. Kim Lato. And Sir Wilson for having me. As a pioneer of e-commerce in the country, it will be no surprise that I'm also one of its staunchest advocates. For those of you who are not familiar with me, I am Kim Lato. I'm the founder and CEO of Kim Store. Kimstore is a pioneer of e-commerce in electronics in the Philippines. We are a 16-year-old company. I started the business when I was a sophomore student, way back college years. I started selling cameras, and now we're selling tablets, laptops, IT products, name it, and we have all the gadgets that you need. So why e-commerce? Well, let me summarize how e-commerce affected us during the pandemic times. Remote and contactless transactions done safely. So how many of you have stories during pandemic that you have bought any products online, whether it's a marketplace, Shopee or Lazada, or in Facebook or in Instagram? Of course, there's this first time stories that you've bought something online, right? So for many business owners, being online contributed to our ability for crisis continuity. And this includes Game Store. We learned firsthand that e-commerce ready businesses hold the advantage during situations like this. We are a 16 year old company and we've been doing e-commerce business for the past 16 years. So our operations were mature enough to handle situations like this. And fortunate enough that we were prepared to take advantage or take that opportunity to serve our market during the pandemic times. With e-commerce, the business nerve center can be mobile. It only shows that you can do business wherever you are. The brick and mortar concept of a business is ideal, but it is not crucial anymore if, you're, if you wanted to start a business. Just like how the internet democratized content, 
e-commerce democratized business. It lowered the barrier of entry and it empowered Filipinos to be more entrepreneurial and creative. In fact, that's what we have been experiencing this past few years. As an e-commerce advocate, I also do mentorship with entreps who are starting out to establish their businesses online. We are seeing it happen at the ground. We're wait for the continuing uh, message. While waiting for Kim to come back, I'd like to ask a few questions with Mr. Carlos Barrera. Uh, how, how many years already in the Philippines? And how has Philippines been to you? Life in the Philippines? So Lazada has been here for 10 years. Ah, uh, yes. Um, wow. I've, I've been here for seven years. Uh, yes. So I didn't get to launch it here. Uh, I started in Malaysia. Oh, wow. Um, and I moved here quite quite rapidly because I love the Philippines and being from Spain, I'm, I'm originally from Spain, right? Yes. Um, uh, congratulations. Your <laughs> team won incredible win last night. <laughs> yes. It's it's a very similar culture, right? So yes. I, I am very happy personally, but I also think business-wise, yes. this is probably the most exciting or one of the most exciting countries in the world. Everyone is so focused on Southeast Asia now, and I can tell you even from an Alibaba group perspective, yes. Lazada group, there's so much excitement. Uh, people see the opportunity in the Philippines, and, and you know, everyone is so open-minded. Business is doing well, but also everyone's willing to try to go online, and, and we see very good support from local communities, business associations, so um, I really enjoy it here, and I think we're, we're off to a great future. So so the pandemic uh, was bad for the world, but good for e-commerce, I heard. Is it true? Uh, later on, I'll properly introduce you. Uh, the, the, you have a very good bio data, very impressive uh, track record. <laughs> so is yeah. it true pandemic was good and bad for the world? I think pandemic was not good for anyone. Uh, but but for the, the world, way yes. I feel about this is that because of digitalization and tech solutions, we were all able to get through this, right? Uh, pandemic was also very tough for us because okay. when you're running a business like ours, everything is at a huge scale, you're planning. We yes. run a platform, that means we're almost like a small government, right? We're helping uh, yes. sellers connect with buyers, we're facilitating everyone. You also so have we logistics. Plan, yeah, we have our logistics, we have our marketing, so we plan ahead, right? When there's a shock like this, it's like we're a mini economy, we're a mini world, right? We cannot adjust everything on the spot, right? Ah. So it was very hard for us to deal with this, but because of digital, because of online, we could help the country and we could help our sellers thrive. And we saw big increase in volume. And honestly, I think that's, that's not going anywhere. That's the new normal. And, and we've seen very, very good trend even after the pandemic. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, we'll go back to Kim Lato of Kim Store, one of your more successful uh, entrepreneurs online. We'll continue her message. And after, after Kim, uh, we have uh, also a Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry Honorary Chairman who will talk via Zoom. Uh, can we continue the message? Yeah. The volume, please. Uh, the audio. We have been experiencing this past few years. As an e-commerce advocate, I also do mentorship with entreps who are starting out to establish their businesses online. We are seeing it happen at the ground level of a wide range of industries. Small businesses are able to create their brand, to create their businesses uh, from 
from clothing, from toys, general merchandises, beauty, anything you can sell online. But this doesn't mean that e-commerce is here to replace traditional shopping. What we are heading to a future where online and offline complements each other towards a seamless shopping experience. The O2O, which is the online to offline shopping experiences, addresses the issues of our customers. From exploring items and browsing to the payment. We have affiliate partner store. Some customers would want to see our products first, test our products first, and then buy online. Why buy online whereas you're already offline? Because they wanted to avail the voucher or the discounts. Some people would not go online first. They would want to check our products in our affiliate store and then they process their orders online. But sometimes they just go offline because they wanted to use um, other payment methods. So it's up to the options of the customers whether they buy online or, or they buy offline. But definitely it's an O2O experience already. So if you are enticed to try e-commerce for your business, go ahead. Right now, you don't have to allot so much capital. You may start as low as 5,000 pesos. You may borrow it. You may loan it. In, in fact, in marketplaces, they are already offering loan grants for as low as 10,000 pesos. You can try marketplaces. Um, now, I could recommend three steps for you to succeed when you're already an online seller or if you wanted to start your business online. First is being searchable. Second is you have to build your brand voice. Third is you should know your customer. So let's start with be being searchable. Try a simple approach first. Start by making your presence online or presence known. One easy step is to register your business in Google Maps. So for example, uh, you're selling office supplies and then you registered your business in Google Maps. So if the customer wanted to search office supplies near me, and for example, you're located in Quezon City and your customers, the one who's searching for your products is also located in Quezon City, it will be searchable easily in Google. It's a simple choice between a slight chance of having your business discovered through passive means or having no one know your business at all. It can be, sim it can be a similar concept, like for example, I wanted to, um, I wanted to eat Sangyupsal. So if you're a restaurant and you are searchable in Google Maps, definitely you can be search searchable in ways because uh, Google Maps has its uh, own technical side and it can be applied in, in apps like Grab, in apps like um, Food Panda if you are part of the app also. Next is building your brand. Let the world know what sets you apart. There are so many businesses these days and your message can get easily drowned in the noise. How do you rise above the noise? That's the next question. Or what is Kim Store's secret for being known for electronics? We've been in the industry for 16 years and honestly, uh, we always make sure that we are the customer's top of choice when they are buying electronics online. So one thing is we provide affordable gadgets and we offer 14-day money-back guarantee if the product is found to be defective and if the product is found to be not authentic. That's the assurance that we give to our customers that our products are genuine and it's the, it's the value for money proposition. So my question back is, what differentiates your brand? How can you build your brand? When people say electronics, how can Kimstore be associated with this brand? Or, um, for example, if you're selling skincare and this is your brand, can you say that your skincare provides smooth skin? So you need to build your brand towards your service, towards the quality or the product that you are offering to your market. Know your customers. Know who to target. The internet can provide so much information and insights to getting to know your customers. One, to serve them better. Second is to cultivate the trust that your customers are providing you. But it's very important to know the demographics of your customer. Say, for example, you're in the sneakers industry. Are you tapping the sporty type of um, target market or are you tapping the formal type of market? So you have to differentiate and you really have to know who your target market is. Second is knowing your customer. Say, for example, you already have a base. 
uh, you can do it in a personal basis so that you, you know how oh, this customer loves to buy shoes in a yearly basis. Or for example, um, let's say this type of customer or your customer can purchase 10,000 worth of um, shoes or something. So you should always define your customer and um, you should also take care of your customer. So I hope I gave you a better understanding of e-commerce. It's a boom, booming field worldwide, and that's what Filipino business are heading. E-commerce is expected to grow in the next coming years as a brand and a seller. Make use of those available data to keep growing in its field, and remember that data is key. Ensure that you have strategies to marry the traditional and e-commerce shopping. Through this, your business will surely achieve its objectives and grow further in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much to Ms. Kim Lato of Kim Store. Uh, just one example of many online retailers. Next, we'd like to invite, of course, uh, the CEO of uh, Lazada Philippines. But before uh, he speaks, uh, I would like to give a short introduction of our special guest. Uh, Mr. Carlos uh, Barrera is Chief Executive Officer, Lazada Philippines. Lazada, of course, everybody knows, is a leading uh, online uh, uh, business group in Southeast Asia, covering the whole region. Um, Mr. Carlos Barrera was born in Madrid, Spain. Uh, he graduated with a double degree in business administration and finance from University, University Carlos Tres de Madrid. Um, I researched also last night that he was the first student of the university to finish a bilingual program in just three years or less than the usual nominated time frame. Congratulations. Uh, also, before Lazada, he was consulting in the industry uh, for five years in Europe and even all the way to South America, covering strategy, mergers, and acquisition projects. Carlos came on board Lazada in 2014 uh, when uh, he started in Malaysia, our neighbor, uh, before rising through the ranks, eventually taking on the position of Chief Operating Officer with Lazada Philippines. And now he is CEO and very successful in growing Lazada Philippines. Uh, welcome. Do you say bienvenido? Uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love, love your Spanish skills. Yes. Love your, um, good, good morning, Wilson. It's the first time we're here today, but I see you all the time and you've been so supportive. So thank you so much for this. And good morning, Asik Jin. Uh, as you mentioned, we work very, very closely with DTI, and that's something we want to be known for, right? And obviously, PCCI chairman that will come later on, and all our friends in the media. I'm, I'm so impressed. When I was walking in, I couldn't believe. It's like full-blown coverage. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I want to share a bit more about our story, what we have been doing, and uh, based on your question earlier, how the pandemic evolved the habits and where we are today, right? I think Asik Jean presented very well that e-commerce in the Philippines is one of the biggest opportunities and it's growing really, really fast. Actually, for the size of the country, e-commerce is relatively large and we're only getting started, right? Uh, Filipinos are so digitally savvy, they spend a lot of time online and we're very committed to growing in this country, right? We started 2012, um, I already mentioned 10 years ago. Uh, the reality is that when we first entered the Philippine market, we were really exploring and trying to figure out what was the ideal model. Um, we've always thrived to do better and to be at the forefront of e-commerce. We're always innovating, trying new things, and growing with entrepreneurs. We take their feedback seriously, and we keep improving, right? Um, when we started, honestly, we're also entrepreneurs ourselves. We started from very, very humble beginnings. We had a very small store uh, we were just buying and selling, reselling mostly electronic items. I remember even some days going to Binondo to buy something because we were out of stock, right? Our first office was a spa. And then, you know, we, we just 
kept growing and improving and we are very close to the story of entrepreneurs doing well. We want to be the light and to, to keep people dreaming because we've gone through that ourselves and we're very, very, very grateful, right? Obviously, as Alibaba invested and we started working very, very closely with Alibaba, we've learned so much from them and we've improved our technology and our tools, right? Um, over the last five years, especially as we've been getting a lot of these learnings and being very committed, what we have seen is that growth has fast-tracked. Many of these merchants, many of the sellers we've been talking to joined the platform within the last five years because they really saw the opportunity and they felt that it was really easy to go online, very, very easy to use Lazada, and that we kept building these tools, right? You can open up a store within 30 seconds. You can use everything from your phone. We do all the logistics service. You don't have to worry about anything. So we're really committed to helping entrepreneurs grow, right? Obviously, the last couple of years have been transformative for all of us, right? And e-commerce really grew. Um, actually, today, the role that e-commerce played during the pandemic was more of a lifeline, right? A lot of businesses had to close their offline or they had to deprioritize their offline and go completely online. But today, we're still growing. A lot of those habits are here to stay. When all of us got used to ordering everything online, um, especially saw the amount of offer and supply that Lazada has, we have over 100 million products, more than anyone else. So we started our NASA Lazada Young campaign because we really believe that you can find anything that you want at Lazada. And we're not just stopping there, right? What we want as a platform I was mentioning earlier, we're our own little economy. We connect sellers and buyers. We are very, very focused on our sellers. So what we want to do, and the main reason why we're here today is because we want to send this message that we are the best partner for every business. No matter whether you're big or small, you need to be selling on Lazada and you need to be very involved in this digital change. And we are probably the easiest, fastest, and cheapest way of doing this. It's very, very easy to sell with us, as I mentioned, 30 seconds. And we are decreasing these barriers to entry. The, we are making e-commerce easy. Kim shared very clearly, and we, we love working with her. She has her own shop, but she learns and tries and grows a lot because she works with Lazada. So everything that she tries and that she pilots with Lazada helps her running her stores, running her own business, and we are a very big part. We think that offline retail is here to stay, but all the experiences will evolve, and more and more of the touch points and more of the purchases will happen online because e-commerce is convenient, it's cheap, and it's fast, right? This is super important for us, especially as our vision is growing MSMEs. Philippines is a country of entrepreneurs. There are so many negotiantes, MSMEs everywhere, and that's very close to our heart. We keep running events every single day. Yesterday, I was just getting the update, we ran five events. Lazada is everywhere. We ran five events in three provinces with more than a thousand sellers every single day of our lives. Even when I go to the office, I tell the team, if I see you here, I'm upset. You have to be out there. You have to be helping the Filipinos grow and build businesses, right? So we want to be that company that helps people pivoting into the online ecosystem. And that's really important for us, reaching every single negotiante, every single businessman, and getting all these sellers that want to transition and to get into the formal economy. We have thousands of merchants signing up with us every single day. And many of them reach a level, above 3 million pesos a year, where we, Lazada, pay to incorporate their business and to make sure that they join the formal economy. It's part of our commitment to DTI and to the country. We help all these sellers reaching a good size, becoming professional businesses, and they pay to make sure that they're taxed, that they're growing, and that they build the professional structure, right? Accounting, taxes, whatever, right? Um, so I just wanted to share that this is really the journey that we have. And especially now, as people are comfortable paying digitally and growing, right? I just entered this morning, uh, and you have your Jika sign. I saw a bunch of people paying using Jikas. This is no longer about trying to go online or trying to learn how to go online. This is our daily life. I, I don't have cash. I don't carry cash. I leave my phone with every morning. I go out with my phone, and I live with my phone. I come back, and I didn't even need to touch anything else. 
everyone is digital. Filipinos are amazing. They spend so much time online, on Facebook, on social media. You're one of the Facebook idols, so I, I know every time we check. People are so connected. So digital is really a part of their life. And what we want to do is to make shopping even more attractive. We want to evolve, to connect, and to make online shopping a better experience for Filipinos. We have been growing new modules, new mechanics. You've seen we do live streaming. We've been doing a lot of new initiatives around entertainment, making it fun to shop online. And we're also trying to make Lazada more affordable than ever. We know there are some challenges, and, and people have been talking to us about the cost of things. But we are here to cover that and to help. So we have been investing more than ever to grow free shipping. Majority of the orders in our platform give you free shipping automatically. Um, and if you see our big campaign or our, our taglines, uh, the ads, Lazada keeps telling everybody, we're fast and free shipping. That's what we want people to know us for. We're fast. We have our logistics. We deliver faster than anyone. Two, three days with Metro Manila and free shipping. So we remove that worry. You can get it very, very cheap and free shipping. Plus, we're reaching all these communities, right? Because when we do fast and free shipping, when we have more affordable goods, what we're also showing them is that they can get the best deal buying online. So we want to release some of the stress, inflation, cost of goods, because online makes it cheaper for them to buy, right? This year, we just launched our everyday low price. This is like an inflation-proof module where we have all the items at the cheapest prices ever. And every single day, you see thousands of items there that are really basic, essential, 99 peso, that you can buy very, very affordable rates. Um, and lastly, I mean, we're here for the long run. So the way we invest in the Philippines, we invest like this, not because we want to grow our business today, not because we want to grow our business tomorrow, but because we're here for the next generations, right? Uh, so what we're building is really the online partner for everybody. And as the world changes, we're in a good position to navigate all these changes. We're getting all the learnings from Alibaba. We continue doing new things for the market. And every single merchant needs to be they really need to feel safe that working with Lazada, they will get all these new tools and all the adjustment to the changes that they can apply to their business as well. So our deep belief is that if sellers succeed online, we uplift the economy. We uplift lives for every single Filipino out there. You were saying earlier, we already play a big role in the economy. Yes, but it's nothing compared to where we're going because what we want is to help everybody earning and creating jobs. So we believe that if the Philippines thrives, our ecosystem does well. We will uplift all these communities together with business associations, with chambers of commerce, with DTI, and with everyone out there to build the nation of MSMEs and to grow the country to the next level. That's my message, and I'm very, very thankful again. Marami salamat. Thank you very much, Mr. Carlos Barrera. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Uh, before we go to the question and answer with our media friends, uh, we have a uh, uh, via Zoom, Mr. Sergio Ortiz Luis Jr. to give a message and to talk to us. Uh, he is the Honorary Chairman of Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, PCCI, also the President of the Employers Confederation of the Philippines, ECOP, plus many other business uh, organizations and companies. Uh, welcome, Mr. Sergio Ortiz Luis Jr for his message about... Hi, good morning. Uh, are you welcome. Good morning, everyone. I, 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 I actually have a very bad connection and uh, uh, very, I would just like to listen in, uh, but let me just greet all the participants and uh, all the those who are watching uh, a good morning and hope we can profit from this forum. I just watch. I'd rather not know. I'm just so sure of my connection. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much, Mr. Sergio Ortiz Luis, for uh, expressing support for online selling and e-commerce in the Philippines. Uh, he is... Uh, uh, well, we have questions here from the media. Uh, one of the questions... Uh, you are welcome. Huh? Uh, our media friends could just raise your hand or just message me. We have uh, many media here and others online. Uh, one of the questions, uh, Mr. Barrera, 
they're saying that the growth during the pandemic uh, 2020, 2021, up to now, um, before the opening of the economy was uh, phenomenal. Is it true the Philippines was the fastest growing uh, e-commerce uh, market in Southeast Asia? And that after that, this year, it is tapering off. Is it true? And is it because of the global inflation or the balancing of traditional and online selling? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, definitely, pandemic was very, very good for the growth of digital services. Not just online yeah. e-commerce, but food delivery, uh, financial services, e-wallets, right? Uh, you saw Filipinos going online. They're very digitally savvy, right? If you look at the public data and the official statistics, even the Google Temasek study, what you see is that Philippines was the fastest growing e-commerce market in the world, in the uh, world. 2021. Uh, in, in the world. The world uh, Southeast Asia wow. and even in the world, right? Um, that was definitely also driven by the very, very long lockdowns. So that's also something we have to consider. But it is not true that it is tapering down. Um, what we see is that the growth is normalizing, but it's definitely not going down in any way. So what has happened is, obviously, after years of very, very fast growth, in some of these reports even show that there are certain verticals within online and digital industry that grew at triple digit during the pandemic, right? So it's very, very strong growth, particularly coming from new users accessing the online platforms for the very first time, right? That also shows the health. Like, it's not just that people are buying more, it's that also a lot of people are going to e-commerce for the first time ever, right? So there was amazing growth, but what we have seen is that it's not really going down. It's just slowing down, normalizing, but it's actually similar to, to what we see in developed markets, right? Um, I cannot speak for the industry, right? But actually what we see at Lazada is that our growth is still very strong. Um, we've been growing quite rapidly over the past few months. This Christmas season is looking really good. Uh, some of our sellers and brands were telling us like, wow, we're ready for Christmas. We need to bring more stocks. And the reality is that we're growing almost at 2019 rates. So it's, it's really a healthy, healthy time for Lazada, a healthy time for e-commerce in general, right? You know, uh, we're heavily capitalized. We're investing more. So we, we are very bullish about this market. Now, on the inflation concerns, I am not an economic expert, I cannot comment on the, on the overall situation, but what I can share is that our sellers are always pricing aggressively online because they see this as an engine of growth. They see this as an opportunity for them to grow their business forward. So something that we track religiously is what is our price competitiveness. 90 plus percent of the times, Lazada is the cheapest place to buy. So. Definitely what you see is that no matter whether people have less disposable income or they're feeling some of the pain, they also go to online even more because they know they can save. They know they can have vouchers, they can have free shipping, and that online is affordable. So I don't really see it as a threat for online. I actually think it's, it's a good way for us to continue investing and to give more discounts to the average Filipino. Thank you very much. There's a question here. Uh, yes. Uh, there's a question. Uh, I'll call you uh, next. Uh, there's a question here from Mr. Alden Monson of Philippine Daily Inquirer. Ah, you're here. Then next, uh, Sha. Uh, can we give the microphone to him, Mr. Alden Monson of Philippine Daily Inquirer? I'll give you mine. <coughs> I'll give you mine I'll fly with it. I, my microphone, back, Larissa. I hear you here. Oh, this is yours. Yes. Uh, yes, good morning, sir. Welcome. Sir, uh, yes. The Philippines House of Representatives uh, passed last week uh, legislation that will levy a 12% value-added tax for foreign digital services. How do you see this impacting the uh, company operations of Lazada? And do you think there will be price increases uh, when it comes to the products that are sold in your market as well as for your partner merchants? Thank you. Thank you for that. That's a very good question. Um, first, I want to share what we've been doing is working very, very closely with government, all the regulatory agencies, DTI, you could see ASEC Um We've been very involved in the passing of ITA. We've been working closely for years on the Internet Transactions Act. We've been working to make sure that uh, we had a bill that helped the internet industry growing in the Philippines, right? 
Um, and above everything, we are a local entity. We are a local company with local sellers. The large, large majority of our sales come from local businesses, right? Um, we are in the business of getting all these brands and sellers from every province to grow. So the digital taxes for digital services, foreign services, cross-border services, are not particularly relevant for companies like Lazada, right? Because that's more tied to entertainment or that's more tied to um, digital goods. We are a business that builds local physical infrastructure to grow local sellers. So I think the impact to us is really negligible because we don't offer that type of service. Uh, but definitely, as we work on the I, like Internet Transactions Act and a lot of the new uh, tax regulation closely with all the uh, with all the government bodies, we'll continue supporting and, and discussing what we think is good to balance growth and also to make sure that the economy can thrive, but that the, there is the right collection and the right way of collecting and, and supporting the economy as well, right? Sir, uh, another topic, sir. Uh, back in September, there was backlash with uh, one of your competing uh, e-commerce platforms regarding their choice of a brand ambassador. Some people said they would shift from that e-commerce platform to yours. Uh, so I want to ask, sir, did you see a noticeable uptick in your um, transactions uh, back in September or October? And also, um, is, it also so is it also now a major consideration for your company when choosing brand and ambassadors to choose um, celebrities or personalities that are less controversial or tied to, polit to particular political parties? Thanks. Thanks for the question. I, I love the difficult questions. I, I actually enjoy it. I, I really like it. Uh, as a company, we try to be very transparent and to always communicate, right? That's why we engage so much with DTI, with all the business chambers. Uh, the reality, okay, is that we're growing quite fast, so it's very hard to attribute. What we know and what we see is that endorser contracts are negotiated over a very, very long time. We just announced Aunt Curtis. We've actually been working on this for almost a year. Oh, one year before you announced her. Uh, seriously. Wow. It's, uh, these are not like decisions that you can make tomorrow or that you can turn and change. These are very, very long-term important decisions as a company, right? Um, so I think in general, Sometimes there's a lot of online noise and backlash over certain things. We've seen it in the past for many, many topics, but many of them don't necessarily translate into the business, right? Um, there are many, many instances where people get upset about something, but then they either forget fast or they don't necessarily go and do the extra step of really changing their behavior, right? So it probably drove some growth, but we're growing overall, and it's really hard to attribute, right? What I can say as a company, right, is that we don't like to attack or we don't like to, to leverage these things because we are very focused on our game, which is growing brands and sellers and helping everybody have the best experience, fast free shipping, and really save money, right? So when we look at endorsers and when we look at uh, everyone we work with, right, we have Catherine, we have Anne, what we want is always having people that are very positive uh, with broad reach, especially mass appeal for young people, for female, and that are very, very aspirational, right? So we never factor in any other consideration, whether it's related to like um, their affiliations, or whether it's related to, to some of the things that they enjoy. We focus exclusively on these attributes, right? And these are big decisions, right? So we, we take it very, very seriously. A follow up to her, his question. Why did you choose Ann Curtis, Catherine, and also Alden, uh, like him, like his name, Alden? Uh, people asking here, uh, what made you choose the three of them, and what are your impressions personally of uh, Ann Curtis? You were saying earlier that she's also a seller. She's also selling through Lazada. Yes. Uh, your uh, impressions of these three people? Well, they're incredible, right? That's why we've been uh, working so hard to get them. Um, what they all share in common is that they're very creative, they're very passionate, and that they're very business savvy. Something we like and that we care about is to uplift, right? We are here to be that, that star that keeps people dreaming, to uplift, right? To help everyone dreaming and doing things. Um, in the case of Anne, this was something very, very important for us. We've been trying to, to really work with Anne for, for a year. 
she is both very talented, very creative with mass appeal, yeah. very good heart, but also a very successful businesswoman, right? She owns BLK, which is one of the biggest beauty brands in our platform. Ah. She's very, very diligent. She's super business savvy, knows her numbers, and really works to, to support online, to stand by the causes that she likes. So we, we like that idea of working with someone that's very passionate and really working with people that are always striving to do better, right? Uh, very similar with Catherine, right? she's super talented, very uh, positive, Bernard, no, no. Yeah. very, very young and appeals a lot to the young audience. She's always uh, trying to do better, helping people. So we, we like that because it resonates with our brand, it resonates with our mission, right? We're here to help and to uplift lives. So that's really how we think about it, right? And over time, what we see, especially as we work with more endorsers and with more um, even influencers for our campaigns is that what matters is having people that really resonate with the women market and constantly remaining aspirational because what we're trying to do is to cater to everyone but keep that aspirational image that Lazada offers very good service, very good quality and it's a company that cares, right? You also have the actor Alden Richards. Yes. What is your impression of him? Yes, we've been working. Um, so we just announced also during uh, 9, 9, 10, 10, very, very driven, fun, very young. And the reality is when, when we work on our brand endorsers, we also look at the type of people that they cater to, right? So there's very, very mass appeal. And you know, a lot of people find him guapo, <laughs> so mass appeal. Thank you. Uh, ah, yes, one more and then. Uh, Yes, sir. sir. Do you veer away from um, personalities that are very vocal about um, particular political issues or not really? So, to be very frank, right, we are a company for every Filipino. We tend to be careful with being associated with any sides, right? But we also like people that care and that are passionate about topics. So, we study on a case by case basis, right? Um, we don't necessarily like to judge what people do, but we need to also be professional and, and, and remain agnostic with some things. Uh, we've seen in the past a lot of our brands and the brand owners are very public about the, the things that they enjoy, the things that they support, and they end up given, getting some impact in their business or getting you know, some, some form of uh, backlash. So obviously as a company, we have to be careful, but we also don't want to be too imposing. So it, it's always about striking a balance and above everything about finding the person that we, that we care about, that we want and address and is with our brand, right? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, can you please state your name to introduce to Mr. Carlos? Uh, hi, good morning. My name is Catherine Cruz. Actually, I'm co-host of uh, Ang Ating Katpunan in RM and Excel every Sunday, 7 to 9 p.m. And I have a blog and uh, online show called Tuklasan Natin ng Bosses ng Magsasaka. By the way, as uh, CEO of uh, Lazada Philippines, do you have statistics or data on number of uh, SMEs and the uh, manufacturers or big companies using Lazada app? and uh, how Lazada helped the Philippine economy. I have a lot of questions actually, but I just gave you two first, two questions. Awesome, thank you. Thank you for your question and, and congrats on, on your show, of course. Uh, there are a few things, okay? First, what we know is that Lazada today caters to more, basically more than half of Filipinos are buyers, active buyers on Lazada, right? This is a ballpark figure. We cannot exactly disclose numbers, right? But that's just like a view of how a lot of them are already buyers, right? Um, and majority of Filipinos have their app downloaded and installed into our phone. So there are so many people that are active, that are engaged, that are buying and that are using Lazada, right? But our advocacy and our big commitment is not just on the user side, but also on the seller side, right? So we have hundreds of thousands of sellers selling on Lazada. This is not just that they are live, this is that they are selling. We literally provide income to them, right? And a lot more than that, live and uploading their items, right? So it's a very, very big economy. Sometimes we, we share, I mean, we, we cannot publicly disclose a lot of data, but sometimes we even share um, for campaigns, for example, for our last campaign, we share the number of millionaires that we made. Uh, there are thousands of sellers that are millionaires, one day millionaires. This is like 11-11. 
there were more than a thousand local businesses that made over a million pesos, right? One so thousand, more than that, wow. So that's the type of things that we care about. It's not just that every Filipino, this is public data, every Filipino has our app. <laughs> there are like more than 70 million people with the app on their phones. Is that most of them, I said that more than half of the population actually buy because we have a very curated experience. We really want them to come back. But we only make that possible because we have our sellers. We have very little control over what they buy, but what we want is to provide the best prices, the best products, the best services, right? That's why what we do is we continue working with our sellers to bring all the sellers and brands into the platform to give them this opportunity, right? Um, so definitely big, big impact, right? Even in terms of jobs, if you think about it, like these hundreds of thousands of merchants, some of them are very large, like Miss Kim has a team of 200 people. Um, a lot of the sellers today, even especially for the chambers of commerce, these, these sellers have 200, 300, 400 people. So we're talking about probably millions of jobs, right? Uh, indirect impact, our logistics partners. So there's definitely a big economy, and, and not just economic impact, but also I think that message that you can also make it at Lazada, right? So we try to be aspiring, we try to be aspirational, we try to support people that are aspiring to do better, and we want to be helpful. We have our Lazada University, we have our entire team working day and night to help these sellers grow and get to that millionaire status level, right? Okay, um, I just throw these yeah. two questions, last two questions, yeah. uh, coming from the comments of our viewers right now. Are products on Lazada authentic? That's one. And uh, uh, ano to? Uh, the chances, are there chances Lazada products are imitation? Just two. Good question. Uh, thank you to the viewers for asking. So I would say two things, right? First, we have a very clear commitment, which is our last mall. As you know, within Lazada, you have last mall, which is the branded destination where every single out, like every item you can find there is authentic, original, and we have a money back warranty that if the item is not authentic, you get your money back. So it's not just about me telling you today that it's authentic, it's about me paying you today if it's not authentic, right? We take this very seriously and that means that we completely curate our last small platform, every single brand, and make sure that they're authentic. We've been running our campaign for the last two years, legit a last small. Actually, Catherine was the face of that campaign because she was very, very passionate about this as well. well. Legit. legit a last small. If you buy from last small, you can be assured that these items are authentic, right? Of course, on the Lazada marketplace, we have hundreds of thousands of sellers, right? But well, one second, uh, there's a question here. Uh, I know you had to leave at 11.30 and come back. Yes, short long yes. question. Yes. Yeah, Juvi de Guzman of DWBL, just want to ask you, what makes you think that uh, Lazada will be great uh, before pandemic? Uh, in addition to that question, there are many questions here asking, the coexistence between the malls and the physical stores and the online stores because the malls are opening the president bong bong marco said no more mass in the malls and yeah. outside what is the uh, relationship of online selling and uh, physical traditional selling how do you see it yes uh, combined with this her question so i've always known that lazada will be great because i saw the way sellers felt about it and the way buyers felt about it, right? There are all these beautiful stories about someone ordering an item from Samboanga and they get an item they cannot find anywhere else. Uh -huh. Today, uh, we are serving every single island in the country, right? Um, so just on that alone, being able to bring a lot of goods with very, very affordable delivery, there's, there's something special there. But also the big moment, as I mentioned earlier, the last five years, we've learned so much about how to run an online business. We learned a lot from Alibaba. The big, big moment was 2018, 2019, when we saw all the businesses joining and we saw how happy they were, right? Um, we had people that were coming from running a very, very small kiosk in a mall, in Glorieta, in a mall in the province that ended up running, there are people like Lucky HR, Ms. Mona, that ended up running businesses with 300, 400 people, with 25 stores. 
So we saw the opportunity and how many of the early adopters, right? People like Steve C, like you, you've known them. Yeah. They went from running a very small physical shop to running 25, 30 stores online and making millions of pesos a day, right? So we saw the power of e-commerce. And that gives us that responsibility to invest, to grow, to invest in our logistics, to develop the market, right? Um, and that's why we thought, okay, there's something great about e-commerce. Now, what is the next thing that Filipinos care about, right? That's why we started building our free shipping. We started building our logistics to make it fast. And, and we created all these you know, affordable campaigns, really trying to get everybody to try it out. Uh, exciting. There's a question here from Ms. Kim Salinas of A to Z Television. Is Mint, uh, can you give the microphone to Ms. Kim? Uh, I could read that. Yes. Uh, the question of uh, Ms. Kim Salinas is regarding the security matters to the customers of Lazada, how do they avoid scammers? How can the customers of Lazada avoid scammers? Uh, sometimes other uh, selling and delivering wrong products or bogus products or online payment security. How are uh, we doing the uh, online payment security linking bank accounts and credit card to avoid fraud? What are uh, things Lazada are doing to protect customers from scammers and fraud? Well, so there are many things that we do uh, and we even have awareness campaigns to explain to people what are some of the challenges, to make sure that they understand what they need to do, right? On top of this, we have a huge risk team that's constantly screening the platform. Uh, we have a zero tolerance approach. If one customer complains about the item, we take the item down. That's how serious we are, right? We proactively screen for sellers that have any type of fake or problematic assortment and remove them. We remove hundreds of thousands of listings every single month, right? We're very, very aggressive with this. At the same time, we have closed all the payment opportunities to get scammed. For example, if anyone is messaging you, I know this is a very important topic. If they message you asking to send them the payment offline, if they message you asking them to pay them throughout any other channel that's not Lazada, these messages get blocked because we don't want them to be asking you to pay anywhere outside of Lazada. And we take full ownership of any payment that happens within the platform, right? So we are very, very careful with this. Of course, what's important is also to read the rating, the reviews. Chances of getting scammed at Lazada are quite low because we are constantly curating. But uh, yes. there's always a chance of having a bad experience because you didn't read the rating or the review or you're buying from a seller that's not that great. But that's why we have millions and millions of reviews and all our sellers have uh. super strong ratings. So you check and know who you're buying from, right? Thank you very much. Maybe next time we should have another session on that. All the things Lazada you are doing to protect and to promote the retailers and also to make the consumers happier. Uh, we, ha we will go to a break. Uh, we will have a short break. But before the break, uh, we have a photo op for our photographers. We want to give you our... This is a giant pandesal. It's called one. Pandesuelo. <laughs> uh, pandesuelo. Amazing. Just, uh, this is for uh, before the break. And it's uh, advanced Merry Christmas to awesome. you. This is a uh, parol in the Philippines. I don't, know, I don't know if we got this from Spain, but parol is a, Philippine word, a Filipino word for Christmas lantern. This is, by Love the it. way, made of seashells. Yeah, I can uh, tell. Philippine Amazing. seashells. Beautiful. So, Thank you so much. Uh, just a picture. Uh, we will have a break. We will have a break. Uh, picture with the bread. Uh, we will have a like 10, 15, uh, maybe 15, 20 minute break. And then uh, don't leave because uh, before 12 o'clock, the president and vice presidents of Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry will be here for a MOA signing between Lazada Group and FFCC CII, a cooperation on promoting more retailers online and uh, marketing uh, online selling. Uh, thank you. Uh, there are advanced party coming uh, who are here, Ms. Uh, Wansen David and Mr. Calixto C and others. But the president will be here with two or three vice presidents. We can take some more questions. Ah, we can take some more questions? Uh, yes, you can just tell me 
uh, when to stop for the break yeah. because uh, yes ah question here yes can we give the microphone please introduce yourself for mr carlos Pereira. yes hi hi good morning lois calderon of cnn philippines yes cnn um, it is you're a regular you. uh, guest in our shows and ah, yes. um, he knows she knows you already he, uh, <laughs> he, uh, I'm not sure if this, th my question is applicable to Lazada because Lazada is a big company, e-commerce platform with over uh, thousands of employees. But the question actually had to do with MSMEs, given that that's the topic today. Um, the uh, Labor Department is offering subsidies for uh, small and medium enterprises just uh, to help them uh, pay uh, or uh, provide a 30-month pay for their employees. So I was wondering, um, first my question would be, how is the sales of Lazada? Because I was thinking in the in this uh, holiday season versus um, last year and pre-pandemic uh, times, uh, and is that a gauge as to um, a, a proper gauge to measure whether the uh, these small businesses are capable of paying 31 pay? And, ah. your, and um, <laughs> your thoughts on, on that, whether they will need the uh, subsidies? And um, I'm not sure also if. Um, Mr. Serio or Ms. Luis is still um, on uh, the yes. Zoom. Yes, can we call also, Mr. Serio? If he could also address that question, whether... Uh, I'm still here, I'm still here. I'm still, I'm still here. here. Hi, yes, he's listening. Ms. Luis, Mr. Ortiz listening, yes. Of CNN. Good to hear from you again, sir. So, sir, yeah, uh, the Labor Department um, is offering subsidies to uh, small and medium businesses um, uh, so that they can provide a 30-month pay to their employees. Your thoughts on that, uh, Mr. Uh, Ortiz Luis, how, how bad or how dire Do you have a comment now uh, yeah. about 13 months for Thank the you. micro, small, and medium? Thank you, Ms. Ana Lois of CNN Philippines. Yes. Yeah, on our side, what we can share is that <laughs> online is still growing quite strongly, like we mentioned earlier, and our merchants are doing well. So I don't have a view of the entire economy or online, but in general, what we see actually to be very frank, online sellers tend to pay quite well because they're growing fast and it's hard to find good talent. Um, so we see, um, and I visit them, especially December for Christmas, we see a lot of them doing 13 month, doing Christmas party. So um, I feel like most of them will be fine, but I, I don't have the full view, right? And we're getting our, yeah, we're getting our 13 month also soon for all our employees, so. Uh, that's good news. <laughs> for micro, small, and medium enterprises. And uh, I was amazed what you uh, Thank you. Do you have any follow-up question? Mr. Ortiz, uh, baka you have a comment now, Mr. Ortiz, about the 13 month uh, to be paid by the micro entrepreneurs nationwide. If Well, uh Actually, uh, we have the ATI to make available for the micro companies uh, a lending uh, package uh, uh, facility uh, without interest. So those who would like to pay but cannot can do them. No, we don't know if that's already in place. Last year we were able to have it in place. Uh, I don't think there is a problem with young uh, bigger companies. Uh, even the small ones, I think they will comply. Our worry really are the micro companies. Unfortunately, 90% of our enterprises are micro companies. 50% of them closed down during the pandemic. Many of them are still uh, struggling to be able to open and, and uh, go back to normal. So those are the problems. Hopefully, if we can give a facility for them, because they have to pay it anyway, uh, so that they can bar. Thank you very much, Mr. Sergio Ortiz Luis, Honorary Chairman of Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, also President of the Employers Confederation of the Philippines, or ECOP. Uh, baka you have follow-up question, huh? You're okay? Yes. There's another question here. Mr. Carlos Pereira. Uh, ang tanong dito, there's a question here. Um, what is the vision or plan of the of Lazada as the whole world, especially the Philippines, 
goes into what is called new normal. That means a mix of uh, physical stores and what is your vision? How do you see the future? There's a study that says Philippine online selling will be double digit growth for the next three years or more. What is your vision for Lazada and your partners, the retailers, the consumers? Yeah. In general, Philippines still has so much to do. And the, the reality is that we're about 10, 12% e-commerce penetration. And a lot of the developed countries, even some of the peer countries are already at 20 to 30%, right? So there's no doubt that e-commerce will continue to grow rapidly. Good double digit growth for the next few years, right? The question is, what's next, right? Uh, I mentioned earlier, at Lazada, we're always trying to innovate and to do more. And we want to take our business to the next level. So Alibaba runs more than 20 businesses in China. They have some offline to online activations. They have some grocery, online grocery, digital hypermarkets. So many of those could be relevant to us in the future, right? Now we're investing a lot on improving our logistics capabilities, giving better experience to sellers, and we're also thinking about new business models. We recently just launched our last mall one, which is basically a business where we get our warehouse service and we offer it to brands and sellers. Um, so everything is consolidated and has free shipping and gets delivered next day within Metro Manila, right? We're doing next day delivery warranty for all our last mall items, all our branded items. So it's not just about whether the the economy will grow, whether online will grow. It's really about how can we drive that growth? We see ourselves as the drivers of that growth. So we want to constantly come up with new things to innovate and to make that happen, right? So I am very bullish about this market, very bullish about the growth. And it is our task to adjust to this new normal and to come up with new innovations to push the boundaries and to take it to the next level. Uh, there's a question here. That uh, Alibaba is a major investor in Lazada. Also with Gcash, do you have a special tie-up with Gcash? Because uh, uh, Alibaba also assisted the uh, Philippines uh, going into Gcash payments. Yeah, so Ant Financial owns uh, Gcash. Ant Financial is part of Alibaba Group. Ant Financial owns a relevant stake, I think about uh, one-third. Uh, but still, the main owner of GCAS is, you know, Actually, Globe, yeah. all the other investors. There are many different investors. So we are very close. We have a very good partnership. Uh, but it's not exclusive for them or for us. We work also with, with everybody, right? So we're always very, very close with them. Uh, the, the, the reality is that it's very important for e-commerce. We have a great collaboration where you can check out using GCAS. I actually check out on the side using GCAS all the time, and I, I use it for everything. Uh, but we also work with other partners, and we're open to working with other partners, right? Um, we're launching Maya. Uh, pay this Maya. First, this, so we're going to launch Pay Maya full integration by first week of December. Wow. Uh, we want to get every single non cash payment online. With you, and we want yes. to offer Buy Now, Pay Later. We want to give more. Ah, you will have Buy Now, yeah. Pay Later soon. So we just wow. launched our Buy Now, Pay Later. Is it your own ago. or you tie up with the banks? Partners, partners. We work with many partners. Wow. And we're opening to more partners. How long? Uh, uh, people are asking, how long would they buy, ma buy now, pay later? Six months? There are many different options, right? One year? It's, it's up to the user. The, it's actually very flexible, right? Uh, yeah. So we launched last pay later four or five months ago. Same thing. Wow. We're very passionate about fintech. We're very passionate about helping customers. And this was one of the big frontiers, right? So today, more than 10 million customers are eligible for this. Um, and we will continue to grow it up until it becomes every single Lazada user can apply for a last pay later loan. And we'll do this with, with many partners. We'll do this probably with GCAS, with more banks. So, yeah, there's so many collaborations in the future. Ah, there's a question here. Yes. Final question. question. Any challenges your company experience uh, in terms of uh, operational expenses, logistics, and security issues? Ah. Hi. Um, Famous columnist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the reality is that there will always be many challenges, but, but we think of them as opportunities, right? Because a lot of these challenges are what allows us to offer our service, right? Um, obviously, Philippines is, a, is, is difficult. It's a very difficult logistics market, especially because of the 
so many islands, the amount of islands, the complexity of reaching a lot of those areas. Uh, but instead of you know complaining or being being pessimistic about it, what we went is we, we built our network, right? We have hundreds of hubs all over the country. We have invested a lot together with our partners. At Lazada, we're very passionate about partnerships, right? We work very closely with other logistics companies, with other financial institutions. We want to do many of these things together with others. Same way we partner so closely with MSMEs, with chambers of commerce, we want to partner with logistics companies, we want to partner with a lot of the logistics players, right? So today, uh, the main challenges, of course, will be internet connectivity. Uh, that's, that's a real concern, especially in the provinces. Some of the logistics are rich and the cost of delivering to certain areas. Uh, but we are still seeing it as an opportunity and we're investing together with our partners to fix that, right? Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question here from our uh, columnist from Manila Bulletin and Tempo, Professor Nestor Cuartero. He also teaches journalism uh, in university, the oldest university in the Philippines, uh, UST. <laughs> thank you, thank yes. you, Wilson. Mr. Uh, Nelson uh, yeah, Cuartero. Uh, sir, Mr. Barrera, uh, how does uh, Lazada help uh, promote locally produced uh, products, especially those coming from the small and medium uh, enterprises? So, majority of the items sold on our platform are locals, MSMEs. Uh, the largest business by far is the local business. But even within that, right, because there are a lot of local brands, even bigger brands, what we have is a separate section uh, that we call Love Local, where we have all these campaigns and all these executions uh, to highlight smaller sellers and, and locally manufactured goods, right? At the same time, we have what we call Last Rise, our program where we provide pretty big subsidies to many MSMEs. We give them up to half a million pesos worth of free shipping, vouchers, promotions, store credit to develop all these sellers that are quite small but have the potential. Uh, so we really care about this, and then we have a specific campaign, even an area within our homepage where you can buy those. So I feel like promoting local goods is not just about promoting locally manufactured products, but also about promoting those local businesses that are growing, that are importing, that are creating that virtuous circle, right? But we want to have a different program for each of those, whether it is for locally manufactured, like Love Local, or whether it is for some of the smaller businesses that are growing, like Glass Rice, it's, it's all part of the same objective, right? How do the companies or the small, medium-sized enterprises fare or perform in the online market? Uh, so this is very interesting, right? Because online is the great equalizer. We've really leveled out the playing field to a point where actually MSMEs tend to do better than big companies. Because what happens is that for most MSMEs, Speed is the name of the game, right? So when they're working online, that's really important because Lazada can be a little overwhelming, right? There's so many campaigns, so many things, so many tools. But MSMEs are great at that because they are negotiators, right? They adjust, they move fast, they try things. Whereas some of the big brands, they may have marketing budgets, but sometimes their processes are a little slower, the approval, like everything requires several layers of approval, the discussions. So I'm very happy to share that MSMEs are actually outperforming uh, when it comes to online and that many of the MSMEs are becoming large companies thanks to online, right? We were discussing earlier, majority of our large companies are coming from very, very humble beginnings. They, they were like a small online seller or they own a kiosk in a mall and all of a sudden today they have 400, 500, 600 employees, right? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Do you see the day when Lazada shall have a physical store? Ah, that's an interesting question. <laughs> so we, we don't close, to be honest, we have physical stores in Singapore, uh, have, huh? we run wow. pop-up executions, we have many physical stores in China, beautiful, ah. when you go to Alibaba campus you can enter their Taobao collection. Wow. So, so is it part of the plan? Good, I, good question. <laughs> we have some pop-ups and we will have some executions this Christmas with wow. specific things in some malls. That's all I can share for now. Ah, secret. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. there's, a, there's another question, follow up to earlier question, which is interesting. Uh, they have three very popular celebrity endorsers. You mentioned Kathleen Bernardo was identified with your 
authentic seat, authentic products campaign. See what's the face of our legit Salas Mall, yeah. Legit Salas Mall campaign. What about Aunt Curtis and Alden Richards? Do you have a specific target message for them or it's general to all consumers? So, Aunt, we just announced Aunt um, no, last November. So, Aunt was the face of our 11 11. Uh, 11 11, yes. And now for 12 12 as well, right? So, she's been working a lot on the on the campaigns around Christmas, around beauty, and fast and free shipping. Uh, but they, they're all more or less general. We swap depending on the profit, depending on the campaign, depending on availability, right? Uh, but yeah, we, the case of Catherine, it was just that she really cared about that specific campaign. Are they short term or long term? Ah, uh, yes. How long is their contract with you? Yeah, long term. We, these are discussions that take a very long time to firm up and to close. So the contracts are, are quite long term. Um, if you look historically also, most of our brand ambassadors have been with us for years. Um, and then even some of the brand ambassadors that are today, they're not like the, the main ambassador, are still endorsers for specific categories, for specific activities. So we, we like to keep a very long term relationship because we think about this market from a very long term perspective, right? We're thinking about decades. Uh, professor, he was telling me earlier that uh, Aunt Curtis, they negotiated one year to finalize the contract. <laughs> one year. So it's not like a last minute. Uh, yeah, well, they must cost you a lot. So uh, I imagine that the amount of money that you sink into these celebrity artists uh, jack up the prices of uh, Lazada products. So the reality is that First, as a company in the Philippines, we're still in investment mode, right? So we are well-funded by our parent company, Alibaba, and we're still investing a lot in the market. So we're not the traditional retailer that's trying to make a very high margin. In fact, as many of you know, tech companies in general, e-commerce companies in general, are still not making money, right? So we are still in investment mode, and we will definitely not pass through any of these expenses to the customer, right? Um, and then over time, you know, what we also see oftentimes is that our brands and sellers are also the ones that want to have these endorsers and that even offer to chip in. So we haven't done this in the past, but it's something that we may do in the future, right? So there are many, many ways for us to do this without having to increase the price to the customer. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. We certainly look forward to the time, the day when Lazada shall have a physical store and we can fit the shoes and everything. Oh, wow. Nakama yung sukat. Uh, good suggestion. Huh? We'll, we'll have something exciting for you. Wow. When will you announce this exciting new... Uh, when Physical store is yes. more of a long-term discussion, long-term plan, but definitely pop-ups and specific areas where you can test certain things. Uh, you will uh, soon have. We will do sooner, right? And to be honest, even with our return policy today, yes, I still encourage you to do that because you get free returns for all yeah. your last small fashion items, right? Wow. So you do have free returns. Wow, return free return. Anymore. So actually, a lot of people, for example, wow. Nike is one of our largest partners. Yes, Nike. Nike sells like tens of thousands of shoes during 11, 11, 12, 12. Wow. Um, and a lot of people try them out and they buy five because they just get so excited and then they, they ah. return one. Yeah. So that's something we actually encourage because we want people to feel comfortable and to remove that friction of shopping online. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're very good, huh? Also free shipping, huh? Free they shipping. have free shipping <laughs> promo, incredible. Thank you. You can return. Yes. Uh, we have uh, no more time for questions now, sorry. Um, we have a break, uh, but before that, we'd like to invite Mr. Carlos Barrera to give your closing statement to summarize your plans, your hopes for the Philippines, the economy of the Philippines for MSME and for e-commerce. What is your outlook? Um, I just want to close by first obviously thanking you uh, and thanking everyone for, for coming here today. We're really bullish about the Philippines and we're very excited about the Philippine e-commerce market. And we want to drive this forward. We see it as a responsibility. And our objective is getting every single Filipino business to sell online and to sell with us, right? We'll continue investing and growing our fast and free shipping campaign all our logistics investments to make it easy for everybody to sell and to deliver nationwide as we do. 
and we want to make it affordable. That's why we continue investing on free shipping, we continue offering more vouchers, more promotions, and we have all our affordable modules, like everyday low prices, last extra, where you can find the cheapest items, and every cheapest. single item wow. is guaranteed the lowest it is in the market today. Plus so pay now, uh, buy now, pay later, soon. We already have it, so you can already check it out, but we'll be a lot more aggressive in the coming months. Thank you very much again to Mr. Carlos Pereira for giving us exciting uh, promos, exciting opportunities for uh, MSMEs. Um, we will have uh, the signing soon in a few minutes. I was, uh, can, uh, can you please check if Dr. Henry Lim and other Federation officials have arrived, if we could invite them over to the stage? Some Federation officials, uh, the Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry Inc. It has 170 chambers nationwide from Apari to Tawi-Tawi. Uh, can we ask the people at the back if the FFCCCII officers are here? Uh, Dr. Lim already here. Ah, uh, sila? Ah, kalating lang. Ah, he's right now for an hour. By the way, the Dr. Henry Limbolnyong sells his rice and notebooks through your Lazada. Of course, sterling, everything. Yes. They're doing yes. very well. And Mr. Jeffrey Nang, the Vice President and others. Ah, uh, yes. We'll have a break for a few minutes. Can you please serve coffee to the media friends? <laughs> yes. Water and uh, <laughs> you can relax, Muna.
Luzon City, Northern Luzon. Ah, yes. Maybe uh, before the signing, is Dr. Lim would like to speak and uh, also later on, um, attorney will speak. Ay, sino yun? Uh, MC? Maka ah, siya na. Sige. Uh, can we give you a microphone? Uh, na? Ayan. I will turn over to you na. Yes. Please kindly introduce yours. Hi, good after, uh, Good morning. I am uh, JJ Okana. I'm uh, from the Government Affairs Team. Attorney JJ Okana. Attorney. Attorney Norman Okana III. JJ, um, I'm from the Government Affairs Team of uh, Lazada, Philippines. So, thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, Dr. Henry Limbon Leong, um, our friends from the FFCCCII, um, Lazada Philippine CEO Carlos Barrera, and Lazada Group Strategy Head Daryl Teo. Of course, our gracious host, um, Mr. Wilson Lee Flores. Maraming salamat, sir. Um, our friends in media and uh, Universalis, again, good morning. Today is a momentous day for Lazada as we forge a lasting partnership with one of the biggest and most influential organizations in the Philippines, the Federation of Filipino-Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Inc. We understand that while we may have had engagements with some of you in the past, today's commemoration hopefully enables us to deepen our partnership with you and the rest of the Federation further and unlock more areas of collaboration together. Thank you so much to everyone who helped us reach this milestone. We in Lazada take inspiration from the FFCCCII, a group of diverse individuals representing hundreds, if not thousands of businesses that are deeply involved in every aspect of nation building. Like FFCCCII, Lazada seeks to be part of every Filipino's consumer experience by making available thousands of products at different price points that address any imaginable need. We do this by, number one, breaking down barriers to participation in e-commerce. Second, being the platform that connects consumers to products that are sourced locally or cross-border. And third, by offering logistic solutions such as fast and free shipping that can help take your business success to the next level. That being said, Lazada looks forward to cooperating with and supporting the Federation in its goals to promote the growth of trade between the local Chinese community in the Philippines and the Filipinos as a whole. Our team, you'll see us around, is also here today to take care of any questions that you might have to understand our platform and solutions better. As with every innovation, latest offerings, best-in-class feature, we are here to help you win and thank you again. And sir, as I close, I beg your indulgence, Dr. Lim Bon Leong, as I make this simple personal request. Would you be so kind, please, as to help make Doña Maria brown rice, 25 kilos, available on Lazada? Sir, I always buy brown rice, sir. Um, you have 10 kilos, you have 5 kilos, 25 kilos, wala pa, sir. Um, I promise you can count on me to be one of your most loyal customers. Thank you. Okay. Uh... Maybe I'll answer your questions right now. Can, can we uh, turn this one to bigger sound? Okay, the reason why Doña Maria did not come out with the 25 kilos for brown is as we felt that uh, people that are eating brown rice really did, do not eat a lot. So we <laughs> just came out with 10 kilos. But if you would like really to order 25 kilos brown, then we will have to uh, do a, another packaging of 25 kilos brown. We really have to study, you know, the market for 25 kilos. But if you like 25 kilos, maybe you can buy uh, 10 packs of 10 kilos. That will give you 30 kilos already. <laughs> anyway, I'm happy that you are patronizing our brown rice. In fact, that's the best eating brown rice in the world, if I'm not mistaken. You know. uh, and again, thank you also, Lasada, you know, for carrying our Doña Maria, not only the brown rice, but the other white rice also as possible. Okay, I'll, sp I'll speak later on, okay. Maybe we can go ahead to the signing. Um, can I call on my colleague, Attorney Kayla Garcia, to um, guide us through? Uh, yes. Ang, uh, I'll put a background there. Ang magsa-sign si Dr. Henry Limpon Leong plus uh, Vice President Mr. Joey Ko. Yes. 
Yes. Witness. Yes. Yes. Mr. Joey Gold, Vice President, will be witness. Mr. Daryl Theo will be the witness. So. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm also from the Government Affairs team of Lazada. Um, first of all, we would like to um, we would like to extend our gratitude also for this partnership with the FFCCCII. At this point, maybe we can proceed to the signing. Um, as a principal signatory for the FFCCCII, we have Dr. Henry Limbonyong, and as principal signatory also for Lazada, we have Lazada CEO Carlos Barrera. As our witnesses, um, we also have. Mr. Wilson Lee Flores, also an officer from the FFCCCII, and um, Vice President Mr. Joey Go. Vice President Mr. Joey Go, and Chief of Staff uh, of Strategy or Head of Strategy of Lazada Group, Mr. Daryl Bayo. And thank you for Mr. George Chua Cham, uh, board member of FFCCCII, also came all the way from Dagupan City. Yes. So I think we can proceed with the signing. Um, some of the most important uh, parts of this partnership include um, the onboarding, the mass onboarding of FFCCCII members as Lazada sellers to help these businesses pivot to doing business online. And um, as qualified onboarded sellers, Lazada commits to providing not just the sellers themselves, but also the members of the federation and the officers, services such as free training, built-in logistic service, payment gateway options, and referrals also to potential affiliates for marketing purposes. Apart from that, um, this partnership also covers the conduct and co-organization of events together, such as seller caravans, educational forums, and or webinars. Yes, very. The two the two CEOs uh, leaders here have very nice signatures. Savini Doctor Henry Lim Bon Young. Uh, the photographers are requesting the signatories to show the contract. Can we? Can we? Yes. Ah, uh, one more. Yes. Uh, yes, photo op of the signing. Yes, can we? Can you hold pens, and then uh, for the photographers to take a picture of you. Standing, standing. Ah, uh, sign muna tapos standing. Uh, after you sign, we stand and show the agreement. Ah, uh, so Dr. Lim. Mr. Barrera, Mr. Joey Go, can we, and Mr. Teo, and Mr. George Chacham, can we stand? And can we show the yeah. agreement to the photographers and the cameramen? Can we hold the piece of papers? We hold all the papers. Yes. 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 A smile for the camera. Yes. Ah. Forgot pala. Meron din pala dito, sorry. Uh, in the middle. Uh, shake hands. Mr. Uh, Barrera and Dr. Henry Lim, shake hands and look at the camera. Yes. Uh, in front, in front. Can we please look at uh, the front? Yes. Uh, we have some in your gift, uh, Christmas. Uh, yeah, in front, in front, yes. We have Christmas lantern for uh, our guests. Because, uh, Lazada Dao and Federation encouraging everyone to shop more upon this one. Yes. 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 
for the others, for, the, for Mr. Till, the others. Yes. <laughs> we, we, have the, we have the happiest, longest Christmas season in the world. A picture? Ah. Ah, me, Professor Nestor Cortero has a question. Microphone, microphone. Uh, Manila Bulletin columnist and Tempo newspaper columnist. No, just, just a thought. Yes, a question. Yeah, hello. Uh, I see that uh, the name of Kamuning Bakery is prominent in this uh, time. I'm sorry, it's does the it, venue, venue. Does it mean that the Kamuning breads will be available on Lazada also? Oh, yeah. uh, good suggestion. We'll do it. We'll do it immediately, starting tomorrow. Famis. Really? Yes, yes, yes. Really? Uh, okay. The oldest will adapt to the newest technology. Talaga. The oldest bakery oh. <laughs> will adapt to it immediately. Okay. Famis, famis. Oh. Professor. Brilliant suggestion by Professor. Smile for the camera. Yes. Advance Merry Christmas to everyone. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, they will say something. Uh, yes, you will introduce. Uh, 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 we'll uh, we'll uh, invite uh, Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry, uh, Inc., FFCCCII President, Dr. Henry Lim Bon Leong, uh, to give closing remarks. Uh, by the way, he is also the founder of SL Agritech, uh, also uh, chairman and CEO of Sterling Paper Group of Companies. And he was awarded a few years ago by President Duterte the highest uh, honor uh, called Order of Lacandula for his personal contributions as pioneer of uh, Philippine hybrid rice technology. Uh, to benefit uh, a, mi a million Filipino rice farmers. Uh, Dr. Henry Lim bon Leong to give uh, closing remarks and later on, Lazada would give your response. Huh? Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Wilson. Wilson Flores is the chairman of our media committee and he has been very, very uh, helpful and he has been very uh, hardworking in trying to promote not only the Federation, but mostly Kamuning Bakery. <laughs> anyway, he's not only promoting Kamuning Bakery because he's also promoting Doña Maria Rice. <laughs> which, which all of you will be eating for lunch today? Uh, we will enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, first of all, Lazada Philippines CEO, Carlos Barrera, Mr. Dario Tio and the of other officers of the Lazada Group, distinguished guests, my fellow officers of the Federation, our friends and media, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant afternoon to all of you. Today, our organization, the Federation of Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry, or FFCCCII, by, for short, is pleased to sign the Memorandum of Understanding that foster our cooperation with Lazada, which is one of the leading e-commerce platforms in Southeast Asia. Our Federation and Lazada meeting today in this MOU signing ceremony is very, very timely because the Philippines internet economy has been the fastest growing in the Southeast Asian region at 93% based on a 2021 study done by Google. Tamasek and Ben and Company. This phenomenon is amazing indeed, a source of optimism. It's very exciting for our Philippine economy. Despite the continuing geopolitics uncertainties and economic turbulence of the world, let us, the Federation and Lazada Group, cooperate to vigorously support our Philippines entrepreneurs, especially the micro, small, and medium scale enterprises for the sake of sustaining stronger Philippine economic growth, to offset the still challenging global economic environment in other regions like the war in Europe 
in the forecast possible USA recession. Mr. Jeffrey Nang, uh, Vice President, can we invite here uh, Mr. Jeffrey Nang, Vice President of FFCCCII? Before we continue, can we Jeffrey. invite Mr. Jeffrey Nang? Yeah, yeah, Jeffrey, come here. The CEO of Lazada is a friend of your daughter. <laughs> By the way, Jeffrey is the advisor of our media committee. Ah, uh, yes, uh, advisor of the FFCCCII. So, uh, Wilson uh, Flores is reporting actually to uh, Jeffrey Nang. Mr. Jeffrey Nang, yes. So, in the Federation, Jeffrey Nang is the boss, direct boss of uh, Wilson Flores. Okay. So, based on the same study, our Philippines internet economy maintained a double digit growth during the first part of 2022 at 22%. And this positive momentum is project projected to grow at an average of 20% annually in the next three years. Since 1954, our federation and our network of more than 170 Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce and diverse trade associations in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao have been deeply involved in promoting trade and commerce and also social development through various programs and projects across the country. For your information, the federation has built more than 6,000 school buildings over the Philippines, and every day there are more than one million public school children studying schools being built by the Federation. Our members are actively engaged in manufacturing, retail, agriculture, food and beverage, hardware, garments, hotels, real estate, steel, and many other industries. The MOU we signed today is in line with our objective to further promote business growth through e-commerce platforms. E-commerce is the wave of the future for businesses and for the Philippines economy. It is a thriving sector that has very great potential. Shopping online provides a wide variety of products and convenience to consumers. It has been projected that a fast-growing global online retail sale will reach one US dollar 6.7 trillion by the year 2023. That is next year. With the internet and technology becoming more and more accessible to all. Such growth is a worldwide trend in these Philippines with its population of 110 million continues to be among the fastest growing e-commerce markets in the world. On behalf of the Federation, I wish to express our gratitude to Lazada for initiating these MOUs and also for its big support to our local MSMEs and companies. We look forward to a more business partnership between Lazada and the Filipino Chinese business in the months and in the years to come. I would like to wish everybody an advanced Merry Christmas. Let us encourage more shopping, more optimism, and more for a more Philippines economic growth. In fact, the Federation has advocated a spend, spend, and spend. Unless we spend, the factories cannot operate. The factory only operates when people start buying. So let us do this. And uh, of course, while the farmers is planting and planting and planting, let us consume and consume and consume more rice, especially Doña Maria rice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for the rest, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Henry Lim Bon Yong, for your closing remarks. We'd like to invite. Uh, Mr. Carlos Pereira, for your response. Yeah, we'll just be very brief uh, because we've been discussing a bit more about the objective of the partnership, the team already introduced, how much it means to us, right? Um, we've been here for 10 years, so it, it cannot compare to the history of all of you here and, and the strength of the chamber and the way people have grown their businesses here is just amazing. As we mentioned earlier, we have been working with many of you. Actually, a story is available with us, all Sterling, all Doña Maria, they're all available, but we have not been able to send the message that we want to work with every business out there, right? So we're very excited for this partnership. We're very happy to engage more often and to support every single one of your communities. We know you're almost nationwide. You have so many chapters and you have so many people that are trying to build their business, and you even have many newer 
entrepreneurs that want to grow, right? So we have hundreds of members that are already selling actively, but we want to get every single member and give them a chance. What we will be doing is giving more support and more packages to all the members of the federation so they can fast track their business and grow online. And we will have account managers that will help them navigating setting up the store. We know how online is sometimes difficult when you have a very successful business. And it may seem a distraction or it may seem daunting. How do I go now and set up an online business when my business is already doing well? But we believe that setting up a shop on Lazada and going online with us is one of the fastest and easiest ways to earn extra income, to grow, and to try some of the tools that will help you navigate in the future. So we're very happy for this partnership. We're very thankful once again. We appreciate the commitment that all of you have to this community, and we will do our part to grow together and to take this to the next level. Marami salamat. Thank you very much. Can we have another uh, photo op again, complete? Uh, can we stand? Uh, yes. Can I, can I ask a question? Uh, yes, Mr. Mr. George Wacham from the yeah. Gupan City, okay. uh, uh, Northern Luzon leader of yes. Federation. One As question. We were saying that uh, we can expand our business, no? Yes. Uh, but uh, a while ago, this gentleman was saying about the uh, Kamuning Bakery products. These are perishable, no? Uh, if you are from Sambuanga, can you really get it through your... Ah, he's a, curious. He's because curious. Uh, it's, it's perishable, no? These are perishable. Like and most from it, the uh, Gopan City and, and so, breads, cakes. So there are several things that we do. First, we have our Last Mart and Last Mall One business, where we get your inventory and put it in our warehouse, where we store it. We have cold chain facilities. We have all types of storage to make sure that it lasts. And then our deliveries are very fast. So delivery is not really a problem. We have special delivery. Then we also partner with other logistics companies, like we mentioned, that offer express service. So you can tackle all those other customers next day, same day delivery. The next question is, how much uh, extra do you pay for this kind of service? Because uh, this product is going to be moved from Quezon City, let's say, to Sulu or to Sambuanga, or to Davao. Wow. No, that's assuming, no? That's uh, a, a hypothetical, hypothetical problem, uh, question. Yeah. So there are two ways to do this. One is you can pass it on to the customer. Many customers are actually happy to go and pay for that. The other one is you can use our fulfillment service, where you pay 15 to 20 pesos, depending on the type of the item. So it's, it's actually quite affordable. Thank you very much. Can we stand and have a photo op with the, con uh, with the MOU for the photographer uh, complete now with the vice president? Uh, I'll, I'll mention again the name. Uh, Dr. Henry Limbon Young here, president. Uh, Mr. Carlos Barrera, CEO. Mr. Jeffrey Nang, vice president, FFCCCII. Mr. Daryl Teo of uh, Lazada Group and Vice President, Mr. Joey Go, FFCCCII, and Mr. George Swatcham, Board Member, FFCCCII. Uh, let's have a group picture. Uh, the, the photographer is requesting to hold the, the MOU. Yes. Uh, my, Mr. Go, can we give Mr. Joey Go? Ah, yes, the speech. Yes. Can we look at the camera with the MOU? Yes. Smile for the cameras. More complete that I own now. Smile. One more. And one more photo requested by the media, shaking hands of uh, President Dr. Henry Lim Bonyong and CEO uh, Carlos Barrera, yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. We have lunch courtesy of Lazada Group. Uh, we'll have lunch. And the rice uh, will be the rice of Doña Maria from Dr. Henry Limbon Leong.
And one of the, uh, the copies daw para kay Clarissa daw, kukunin ni Clarissa. Copies of, uh, isasign muna ni Isergen. And I uh, will announce something. Uh, Lazada has agreed to speak. The CEO of Lazada and other executives will speak via Zoom at uh, FFCCCII Forum at with 170 chambers uh, nationwide via Zoom. We will invite the media to participate also in that unique uh, dialogue between this business federation uh, and the Lazada group. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you. Ah, uh, can we serve the lunch here na lang? <laughs>